Hi, this is Steve with OS Nexus, and in this video we're going to go through the process of setting up remote replication. So to set up remote replication between two Quanta storage systems, the first thing you need to do is create a storage pool on each of those boxes. For this uh, video, I've set up two Quanta store boxes, each with a storage pool on them, so it's a really simple configuration. Uh, 4427 has pool 1 and 4429 has storage pool 2. And what I've done is created a couple of network shares on pool one, and I've created a couple of storage volumes. These are the block devices or LUNs on, uh, on uh, storage pool as well. So we have both file and block storage provisioned. And what we wanna do is to replicate all of that from pool one to pool two, which is at, at, in uh, the other system, which is at our DR site. And to do all this, we just need to go to the remote replication tab and set up what's called a remote replication schedule. To set up remote replication is a three-step process. And that whole step-by-step -step procedure is right here at this bottom button in our Getting Started page. Uh, those steps are to create a storage system replication link, uh, then create the schedule, and then to start the schedule. So a little bit about the storage system replication link. What this is about is it's about doing a key exchange between the two systems and also controlling the bandwidth that is available for replication between those systems on a specific uh, network port on either side. So we're gonna start with that and then we're gonna go on to creating the schedule and getting that going. So step one here, let's go ahead and create the first uh, storage system link. Um, we only have two systems in this particular grid. If you had many different systems, you might set up multiple links so that you could replicate bidirectionally from many different systems. Um, but here it's very simple. Uh, it automatically selected some defaults that look good and uh, we can limit the bandwidth by default, sets it to 200 megabytes per second. But if you have a faster network or if you wanna throttle it back because you don't want uh, the remote replication chewing up uh, too much of the available uh, um, throughput uh, for the given storage pool, you might uh, slow that down. I'm just going to leave it at the default. Uh, encryption is enabled by default and you can also enable uh, compression. So this data as it's transferred between those two systems will all be encrypted and compressed on the wire. So once we've got our uh, storage system link set up, uh, you'll see that there's uh, two links here. Uh, one allowing us to replicate from 27 to 29, and one uh, allowing us to replicate in the reverse direction. Now that those are all set up, we can create a schedule to go replicate our volumes and shares from pool one to pool two. So to do that, we go to this uh, section at the bottom, uh, volume and share replication schedules, and then hit the button for create replication schedule. You can also access that from the pop-up menu here just by right-clicking. We're gonna call this, um, just uh, uh, this replication schedule, we'll just call it schedule one. And uh, we're gonna replicate from uh, 27 to 29. And the pool that we want to put our volumes and shares into on 29 is pool two. If there were multiple pools on uh, 29 on the destination, it would let us select from that list in the re remote pool list. This max delta points, this is the number of snapshots that it will rotate through uh, throughout the day. So if you, uh, once it gets to three snapshots, it will create a fourth snapshot and then delete the oldest one and it will rotate through those so that you have uh, the last few snapshots. Um, uh, three is a good default, you could increase that number and uh, then you'll have more and more uh, history to refer back to. But there's also this tab here for the long-term retention rules, and this is really where you wanna to go to indicate the number of snapshots or what we call checkpoints to be able to recover volumes and shares from much older uh, or much further back in time. And the default is to keep two hourlies, two dailies, two weeklies, two monthlies, two quarterlies. So you have a lot of ability to go back in time and recover your files or virtual machines or databases. Uh, and it's especially important as a way to protect uh, your company or your environment uh, against ransomware attacks. Increase this quarterly replica snapshot checkpoints to be uh, four or eight. Uh, uh, eight or more is a good selection. And the reason why is, is that those ransomware attacks, sometimes they'll go and attack an environment 
and you won't know about it for many, many months, maybe upwards of a year before they go and they uh, trigger the environment to, uh, to do the attack. And so this gives you the ability to roll back in time. Uh, if you had eight quarterlies, that means you could go and roll those virtual machines and data uh, repositories back in time as many as uh, as much as a couple of years. So uh, going back, uh, we uh, to the beginning here, we named our schedule, we indicated which pool we want to replicate to, and now uh, we can choose how often we want to replicate. Um, the most common uh, way to replicate is either you know a nightly replication, which is the uh, default here. It's going to replicate Monday through Friday uh, at various times during the day. Uh, you can set this to be, uh, you know, just uh, at the end of the day or, you know, at 1 a.m. in the morning when nobody's uh, actively using the systems or you could do it multiple times throughout the day. But another popular way to do this is to just replicate every 30 minutes. And this is going to replicate all the different changes that are happening to those files, uh, to that, those uh, network shares and, and storage volumes um, throughout the day. Uh, and uh, you can set this interval to as low as five minutes. Um, at the, at the uh, uh, command line, you can even reduce it down to every two minutes. And then last, we need to choose what we want to replicate. And uh, we want to replicate both our block storage and our file storage. Uh, so we're going to do our, our VMware data stores as well as our, our Veeam backup folders. And uh, now our schedule is set to go. So we created a schedule which is going to replicate from pool one to pool two. Um, we selected all our volumes and shares. And we set up some long-term retention. And we set the quarterly here to uh, eight so that we can roll back in time as much as, as two years. And so over uh, the months ahead, uh, as the schedule runs, it will retain uh, more and more uh, snapshots and it will be rotating through two hourlies, two dailies, two weeklies, and so on. So that's what that's again what the long-term retention rule is about. So I click OK. We've got our schedule. If we open this up, we can see what's in the schedule. Uh, we've got the, the folders and the storage volumes that we selected. You can see that this is going to replicate every five minutes, and uh, it just runs uh, every day. And uh, it's going to rotate through the short-term uh, replicas of three, but remember we set those long-term retention rules, so we're over time this is going to go and collect up more and more uh, snapshot points and then rotate through those as well to maintain dailies, weeklies, and, and uh, monthlies and quarterlies. You can see that the schedule already, uh, because we chose an interval-based schedule that runs every five minutes, it is already triggered to start doing the remote replication. And so uh, what we can do is go to uh, this section here and see what's, what's happening in terms of uh, the active remote replication. We've already replicated uh, that, the first two volumes, and now we're replicating the last share and uh, it's initializing that replication and is going to go and, and finish sending that. Um, so at this point, it's done. There wasn't that much data to replicate because I had just created these volumes and shares. And now we have a series of volumes and shares that are on pool two. Um, so we've replicated from uh, these replica sources to these replica targets on 29 and on pool two. So uh, another way to look at this is to go to the schedule and then look at the report. So this replication report shows us all the details of how much it's re replicated, how long it took for the whole schedule to run. And so over time, you'll see more and more of these replication reports in there. So you'll be able to see um, how frequently and, and um, uh, how much data is being transferred uh, throughout the day uh, for each of these uh, uh, automatic uh, replication schedule runs. The last bit I wanted to show you is here on the main tab. If we go back and look at our uh, backups and uh, our Veeam backups folders and our storage volumes, you're going to now see these underscore checkpoints. These checkpoints are the copy that's on the other pool. So we've replicated from pool one over to pool two. And so that's where you can see here, if I sort by pool, uh, these two are in pool one. These are our copies that are in pool two. So uh, if in the event that the first system goes offline, we can go to our secondary system, uh, and uh, which has pool two, and activate these and start using these volumes and shares uh, uh, on the DR site to restore access to data and re resume uh, using the virtual machines. But one thing I wanted to, to point out is that the minute that you connect to a checkpoint, 
um, it becomes what's called an active replica checkpoint. And we can change this manually to go put it into that mode um, by just saying modify and then checking this box here that says active replica checkpoint. So once a volume has been marked as an active replica checkpoint, and we can see that here in the volume properties, uh, it will no longer be re uh, running the replication schedule because at this point it thinks that that checkpoint is in use in your DR site. So if any one of the volumes or shares in the given schedule is active as a replica checkpoint that's active in your DR site, maybe you're testing your DR process, um, or maybe you failed over to the DR site. Um, uh, either way, those checkpoints become active checkpoints as soon as you log in via iSCSI or fiber channel to the block devices or NFS and SMB to the file shares. And once any of those becomes active, the schedule no longer runs. Uh, you, can, uh, man you can also uh, disable the schedule just by right clicking on it and saying stop. But once we have active checkpoints, if we try to trigger the schedule, it's going to say, sorry, you have an active checkpoint. So the thing to keep in mind is that once you're done uh, with your DR site, if it was just to test the DR site, the only thing that you need to do is uh, make sure that the schedule is enabled and to go through the various uh, uh, volumes and shares and, and make sure that uh, that none of them are, are still set up as, as active checkpoints that would block the replication. In this case, this one is, so I'm gonna go modify it and, uh, and uncheck this box here so that it's no longer indicating that, hey, don't replicate over the top of it. At this point, replication can continue and uh, it will just start to automatically replicate over the top of those checkpoints. Um, but let's say that you are using those checkpoints and uh, you wanted to re replicate in the reverse direction to go restore uh, data from the checkpoint back to the primary uh, data store, uh, in this case, this VMware data store DS1 or this volume uh, uh, from the checkpoint. So those two are linked together and we wanna flow data in the reverse director direction to do a rollback. Um, so what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna go in, and again, we're gonna have this uh, set up as our active replica checkpoint, kind of put it back in that mode to simulate that. And now we're gonna go and uh, find that association. So uh, DS1 is replicating to replicator uh, VMware data store one checkpoint, and we wanna reverse that. So we're gonna click on this and say, roll back from replica inside of the replica association section. And this is saying here in all caps, look, you're gonna overwrite data on that primary side. And the way it's gonna do this, is it's gonna go create a snapshot of the target, uh, of, of the source from which it's gonna replicate, which in this point is the checkpoint, and then send those changes back to our, our previously primary site. So uh, um, this is all there is to it. It's making really clear here that the data is flowing from DS, uh, that, that the link from DS1 to DS1 checkpoint is going in the reverse direction, uh, source to that as target. Click OK. And this is gonna go create a snapshot uh, and then reverse the flow and replicate in the reverse direction for just that one volume. And it's done. So uh, we're gonna go in, into the storage management section and you'll see uh, a snapshot uh, that represents that replication. Um, we went and replicated from here back to here. I'm gonna go uh, refresh the pool. This takes a minute for it to refresh, so we're just gonna kick it. And, uh, and now you can see this is that um, uh, checkpoint snapshot that was created. Uh, and then the delta uh, of all the changes that were made on that side were pushed back to our, our pool one, uh, back into VMware DS1. So that's all there is to setting up remote replication. And again, those steps that we went through, um, we created a remote replication link. Um, we then created a schedule and triggered the schedule uh, to get it replicating. In this case, it automatically triggered because it was an interval-based schedule. And then we, we demonstrated how to do a rollback. And again, um, replication, uh, 
as long as you have uh, your any one of your volumes set as an active checkpoint, it will not be able to replicate because it's basically saying, hey, uh, I'm using this right now. So now that we've done the rollback, we're not going to be using this 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 uh, volume uh, as a active uh, volume in our DR site. We want to continue replication to from our primary to DR site. We're going to uncheck that box, and now replication will be able to resume. Um, and uh, if we waited a minute, that would just automatically uh, resume replication. You can also just go here to the schedule and get it started back up again, and it will replicate from pool one to pool two again for us. So let's go ahead and do that. And uh, so now you can see it, it running. All those steps that we just went through, again, uh, available in the getting started uh, section. That's this button here or the one in the upper right hand corner. Just choose the remote replication setup and uh, follow those three steps. That's all there is to it. Uh, thanks for watching.